Welcome to another exciting edition of Video Lectures R Us. Today we're talking about the respiratory system. And just to make sure we've got everything in context, I'm going to review a little bit before we go on to something new. So to start with, we were talking about the way the brain controls ventilation, the way the brain controls breathing in and out. Starting with the ventral respiratory group, which is responsible for setting up the normal pattern of breathing, and also looking at the dorsal respiratory group, which gathers information from the brain and from the body and then sends signals to control the rate and the depth of breathing by controlling the neurons in the ventral respiratory group or the VRG. We also talked a little bit about the pontine respiratory group here. The pontine respiratory group gets information from the brain, specifically from areas like the hypothalamus, um, the limbic system, which controls emotions, and from the reticular formation, which controls alertness. It integrates that information coming from the brain and then sends signals to both the dorsal respiratory group and the ventral respiratory group. So these three respiratory groups are all involved in breathing. What I want to go on to next is looking at some of the different factors in the body that control those respiratory groups. So what sorts of signals coming from the body or from the brain go to the respiratory groups to help control breathing. And one of the most important is the level of carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is particularly important because it has such an effect on the pH of the blood. So by regulating CO2 level, we can regulate pH. The carbon dioxide level is detected in chemoreceptors found in the aorta, in the internal carotid artery, and also in the medulla oblongata of the brain. The chemosensors in the arteries are responsible for detecting bigger changes in carbon dioxide levels, and the sensor in the medulla oblongata is good at detecting even small changes in the level of carbon dioxide in the blood. If the carbon dioxide in the blood is too high, that's going to make the pH too low. The chemoreceptors will send a signal up to the brain saying the carbon dioxide is too high, we have to fix this. And the um, dorsal respiratory group, which receives that information, will send signals to the ventral respiratory group and tell it to increase the rate of breathing. You'll breathe faster, that will blow out more CO2, that reduces the CO2 in the body and lets the blood pH come back up where it belongs. The opposite is also true. If your CO2 level is too low, that means you don't have enough CO2 in your blood, your pH is going to be too high. The chemoreceptors detect that and they send a signal up to the dorsal respiratory group to say, wow, we don't have enough CO2, we need some more. The dorsal respiratory group sends a signal to the ventral respiratory group telling it to decrease the rate of breathing. You'll breathe more slowly, you'll let the carbon dioxide build up in your blood a little bit, and that will help bring your blood pH back down where it belongs. A second factor that controls the respiratory rate is one that you probably would have thought of already, which is the oxygen level. What's counterintuitive is that oxygen level is actually less important to controlling the respiratory rate than the carbon dioxide level. But the oxygen level is still important. The chemoreceptors that are found in your aorta and in the internal carotid artery can detect oxygen levels as well as CO2 levels. When your oxygen levels in your blood are too low, that sends a signal up to the dorsal respiratory group, which looks at that and says, wow, we really need some more oxygen. And it sends a signal to the ventral respiratory group to increase your respiratory rate so that you breathe more and you can exchange more oxygen and increase the oxygen level in your blood. A third condition that can affect what's going on with your breathing is the presence of irritants in your airways. You have irritant receptors in your airways, in the trachea and in the bronchi, and when these detect the presence of some sort of irritant, this could be something like smoke or pollen, pollution, dust, something in the air that's getting down there into your respiratory passages, these irritant receptors send a signal up to the dorsal respiratory group saying, look, we've got a lot of irritants coming into the lungs, we need to fix this. And this is where it can be a little counterintuitive as to what the result would be. And the most common answer would be that you would decrease the respiratory rate. After all, you don't want to breathe in as much. 
That's not exactly what happens. What does happen is we speed up the respiratory rate. We breathe faster. And what this does is by shortening the time that you're breathing in, you breathe more shallowly. So irritants in the respiratory system cause your respiratory rate to speed up. So you'll breathe faster, but your breaths will be shallower. So you're not drawing the irritant deeply into the lungs. You're trying to keep as little of it in the lungs as possible by not breathing in as deeply. A fourth factor that has a pretty good effect on our respiratory rate is one you've probably noticed before, and that is our emotions. Particularly strong emotions have an effect on the respiratory rate. These strong emotions are going to be detected or felt in the limbic system of the brain. So deep in the brain in the limbic system is where we actually feel things like um, excitement or arousal or fear or anger. And these strong emotions send information through neurons that go to the pontine respiratory group. So here we're finally sending some information to the pons. The pons looks at that information and says, wow, we're really feeling emotional about something. Remember that evolutionarily, strong emotions were a signal for the need for activity. You either needed to run away from something, or you needed to mate with something, or you needed to fight something. So strong emotions meant the need for activity. When the pons detects that need for activity, it thinks, since it's sensing strong emotions, it sends signals to both the dorsal respiratory group and the ventral respiratory group that are going to speed up your respiratory rate. This is gonna increase the oxygen exchange so you can keep high levels of oxygen in your blood even if you do participate in some sort of activity. There's one last important factor that can control our rate of respiration, and that is voluntary control. We breathe without thinking about it, but we can also think about breathing and breathe consciously. And so there's some voluntary control as well. When you want to voluntarily control your breathing, those signals come from way up here in the cerebrum, from the motor cortex. The motor cortex sends signals that go down the brain and they actually bypass the pontine respiratory group and the dorsal respiratory group and the ventral respiratory group and go all the way directly to the motor neurons that control the muscles of inspiration and expiration. So they're sending a signal directly to those muscles so that you can breathe in or breathe out consciously when you want to. This is particularly important when it comes to doing things like um, talking or singing or swimming when you want to breathe when you need to breathe and then you want to not breathe when you are say with your face in the water so conscious control is pretty important but conscious control really only goes so far I can consciously control my breathing to a point but not past that point if I really wanted to I could take a big breath and then I could talk for a really long time without taking another breath. And I could talk and I could talk and I could talk, but I'm only going to be able to talk for so long before eventually I really am going to need to take another breath no matter how much I'm trying to keep talking without breathing. Eventually the involuntary signals that are coming from the areas of my body measuring my oxygen and CO2 levels is going to force a breath whether I actually want to breathe yet or not.